Tropical cyclone Sitter devastated parts of Bangladesh on November the 15th. The tallies of people killed and left homeless keeps going up. This week, the UN's humanitarian agency announced that over 8.5 million people were affected by the storm, and the Bangladeshi government said it needs $1 billion for recovery. Over 3,000 people have died. Half a million homes were destroyed. Bridges, roads, and rice paddies wiped out. Journalist Afsan Chowdhury recently made a film called Who Cares If Bangladesh Drowns, which premiered at the UN Climate Change Conference in Bali this week. Afsan Chowdhury joins us now. Afsan, the title of your film, Who Cares If Bangladesh Drowns? Um, if you judge by the US presidential election campaign, Democrats or Republicans, the answer to that would be nobody. The issue of what's happening in Bangladesh and countries like Bangladesh, who seem to be a, a most affected by the early stages of climate change crisis, it's not even in the U.S. dialogue. No, certainly it doesn't figure much. It's not recognized, partly because people are used to thinking of what climate change is doing in the long run. But in a country like Bangladesh and a lot of countries like in Africa as well, climate change has already happened. The devastation has already occurred. That has not seeped through. So I suppose, yeah, people really don't care. For, for you yourself, uh, from Bangladesh, for, from people from the region, how does this feel that you can have such uh, disasters and virtually go unnoticed? Well, disasters of one kind is the cyclone disaster, which we had. And if you look at the history of disasters, the cyclone disasters, you'll say in 1970, several hundred thousand people were probably killed. And we really don't even know. In 1990, there was another cyclone and about 75,000 people were killed. And so people have worked since 1990 and reduced death toll. But what people cannot do much about is the devastation on livelihood, on shelter, home, schools, and agricultural production. So people have a sense of uh, a, a feeling, let's say, that, well, okay, Nobody's really going to listen to us. Nobody's really going to care. And people live with this. The problem of massive flooding in Bangladesh, it's, it's not new. To what extent do scientists know that this is more exaggerated by the climate change crisis? Well, scientists are now clear of saying that, yes, this is caused by climate change crisis. Clearly, I mean, flooding is going to happen and the tide is going to come in much more ferociously. Now, what, ha what happens in, in a country as low as Bangladesh? Because even if there are a few centimeters, parts of Bangladesh are going to drown. So if there are millimeter, I mean, the meter rises, one third of Bangladesh could disappear. But they know one thing is that, yes, the regularity of the cyclones are going to happen. What you see around you is really habitation. What you see around are people's lives, homes. And these have all drowned under the floods. This has happened in one country, two countries, three countries, and probably happened this year to many other countries. Every few years, it does it at a scale which is unprecedented. It does it at a scale which causes suffering, like people are short of medicines, people are short of food, people are short of livelihood, all of them washed away, and they have nobody to turn to. It's so very easy to ignore Bangladesh when it drowns. It's so easy to ignore the poor when they drown. The bad news, this is going to happen more and more. Climate change will make it a regular part of life. It's going to happen next year. It's going to happen the year after that. And worse because of climate change. And worse than because of climate change. Because climate change comes to a country which is already pro one of the worst national disaster prone country. So what we're talking about the rising level of the sea yeah. as a result of global warming and melting of global ice caps. Yeah, That's only one part and I think that is what has happened is the imagination of people caught by the rising sea or the melting of the polar ice caps. But the, but the effect of climate change is on all other matters including tides including agricultural production, including cyclones, including river erosion, including uh, drought, including salinity, which is which I don't think the Western world doesn't understand what salinity is, that vast tracts of Bangladesh are already beyond cultivation.
ইন্ডিয়া <laughs> Certainly, Bangladesh will be, probably will be wiped out. I hope not, but India is going to be very badly affected. And that's going to have a regional and perhaps even a global impact. So where do millions and millions of Bangladesh, Bangladesh is one of the most populated countries in the world. Uh, where do Bangladeshis go and what are the Bangladesh consequences are of them going, going there? We have also shown. Bangladeshis do come because of climate change and natural disaster related situations to the cities. Dhaka, for example, is almost collapsing. It cannot sustain any more population. Now they are, where, are they, where would they go? They will go to India. That's the only place. But India is already fencing the borders. But fencing the borders may actually be the trigger. Because if you refuse to let people cross over, it's, it's good for India in a short sense. It's bad because it's going to create lots of political problems. It, it, speaking of political problems, Bangladesh is mostly a Muslim country. Um, d, d, is there a sense in Bangladesh that this is sort of another way the West doesn't give a damn about Muslim societies? I don't think they see it as a Muslim society, but the, the feeling is very clear that Bangladeshis, or people who know, think the West is, doesn't care. You are also going to have population groups who are going to see it in terms of what you mentioned, Islam and the West. This is going to be interpreted that way. Unfortunately, in India, you have a population which is Hindu dominated. So if India, as, a, uh, as we asked and people are saying, if India stops refugees from crossing the borders, it could be interpreted as a communal question. Well, there are uh, Hindu Muslim question. Hindu Muslim question. As a result, some people may want to take advantage. And there is no way that can't be stopped from becoming a regional crisis. There's a conference coming up in Bali to discuss climate change. Um, are, 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 is it going to address long-term and short-term solutions? I don't think there's going to be too many short-term because I've been uh, reading all the documents and it says, yes, there should be, especially for the hard-hit countries like Bangladesh, some in Africa, and also the Oceanic Island countries, there should be an adap adaptation fund and so on and so forth. But if you look at the money that has come into UN, that money is equivalent, I think, to one week's expenditure Britain does on flooding in Britain. And that kind of money is not going to make any kind of difference. Now, I think the richer countries and also richer people think they can escape climate change by spending money on themselves rather than spending money on the world. And if you listen to the Canadian Prime Minister saying, you know, this is going to be Canada's position, when you take that kind of a nationalist position on a global problem, I think you are, you are probably missing the mark. You probably don't understand the problem as well. There's no sense of urgency in, in most of the industrialized countries. No, there is no sense of urgency. And I think the feeling is that the West can escape. What are the global implications, uh, say, of the crisis in, in Bangladesh? I think the crisis is not going to directly come uh, from Bangladesh to the West. If any crisis happens, it's first going to affect India. In terms of conflict, unfortunately, people are also mentioning terrorism. Already in India, there is great fear, concern, and anger that Bangladesh is being used by some groups who are terrorists, linked to extremist groups, who are These using are Al Qaeda type Al Qaeda groups, terrorists, yeah. and they are using Bangladesh as a sanctuary to mount attack on India. And a destabilized India in this world means a destabilized world. That is something which I don't think has been understood in the West that we are we are linked, whether we like it or not, globally. We haven't in the history of mankind ever faced a situation where we are really looking at the apocalypse, if you will. Science is right, but the political science is very wrong.